So, uh, welcome to the big BBX Quantum Leap uh, show. With me uh, at the moment, we have uh, Saviz and uh, Rick from BizSpot down in uh, Sydney, Australia, who run a real estate uh, section of the digital trade credit economy. And I'll be talking to them about, uh, uh, about that during the course of this uh, presentation. So this is using your digital trade credit to acquire wealth creation in the form of real estate. So well, welcome to the show, guys. Nice to see you both. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Great to have you here. Rick, uh, we've known each other for a long time and Saviz. And uh, so uh, I'll just uh, alternate between having both of you because you're both uh, part of the BizSpot uh, empire as it is today. Rick, sure. uh, you know, you go back with uh, the trade industry a long time. Can you just share, Rick, uh, what got you involved in that in the first place? I guess like anything, John, when I was first shown it, I, it's the opportunity to utilise dead capacity in a business. And when I first saw it, I couldn't believe such a thing existed. And I was just in hook, line and sinker from day one. Brilliant. And Sabiz, what about you? Well, 15 years ago, I came, from, I, I studied in England, I was living there, and then I came to Australia. BBX was my first job in Australia, so that's how I started. 15 years ago, I met Rick, and as, ever since, we are great mates, and still we're working together in the same industry. Interesting. So, uh, Rick, you. You, you also do a bit of moonlighting and you're pretty well known in Australian circles uh, with your work at Fox Sports. Can you just uh, touch on that, please? Sure, John. Look, I, I guess 22 years ago, I got into the world of boxing via Fox Sports and main event by accident. Um, a ring announcer never showed up one particular evening and uh, I was suddenly thrown a bow tie, a white shirt, and get in a ring with an earpiece and see how you go and... 22 years later, I'm still doing it and for many promoters as well as Fox and other TV type entities around the, the globe. So it's quite good. I'll, uh, I'll come back and develop that in a moment. And Saviz, you've got an interesting story too, haven't you? Before you came to Australia, you're, you're originally from Afghanistan. Yes, actually, I was born and bred in Afghanistan, Kabul. Until the age of 12, then we moved from Afghanistan due to fighting and uh, came to, we actually migrated to England, Turkey, and then from Turkey to England. And then life takes me here down under. And in Australia, since I've been here, it's been just great. Australia is my home now. And uh, yeah, from here we operate at the moment. It's uh, been, been a nice story. So oh, Thank you. Thank you, John. So uh, you developed the real estate side of the business and um, one thing led to another. So yep. can you give me, uh, Saviz, can you give me an example, please, of uh, roughly how much value stock that you have for sale using a BBX digital trade credit as a deposit or, or part of the payment or all of the payment at the moment? Look, uh, uh, we've got uh, an excess of over $2 billion uh, worth of stock. We've got over 2,000 properties uh, in our platform at the moment, at least, I think, uh, uh, probably three to 400 listings. And each listing, in some listings, we've got about 50 to 100 units, apartments, block, uh, commercial, land, different types of investments. So altogether, it's over $2 billion worth of stock that we've got available uh, that people can take advantage of using uh, barter trade credits or the BBX digital credits. Brilliant. So $2 billion. Wow. $2 that's billion, a, yes. That's a mind-boggling number. So uh, We well, are at the moment the largest. Uh, a real estate provider probably in Australia and I could safely say in the world uh, than any other barter exchange We are because we are not an exchange we are just a platform and pretty much uh, we get these properties uh, yeah, and we offer it pretty much to anyone uh, in the industry yeah so what uh, what sort of role do you play in this Rick? Look, my role is is probably just a minor role at this present uh, time John I'm really uh, for Saviz, I'm helping out more with the marketing and promotion of the BizSpot uh, name and the platform that it exists upon and making sure we get it out to the wider public. Okay. And what sort of marketing uh, things uh, uh, do you do? Can you give us some examples? Well, just this past week, we've negotiated a deal with Saviz and 
a fight promoter here in uh, Sydney for the uh, Paul Gallen and Mark Hunt fight. And for those that are not familiar with either of those fighters, Paul Gallen is the former captain of the Cronulla Sharks and NRL side here in Sydney. And of course, Mark Hunt is a well-known UFC fighter and they're meeting up next week. And uh, we did a $50,000 uh, barter credit deal with Service to make that happen through Bizpot. Wow. Okay. So uh, getting the Bizpot name out there and... Uh and uh, attracting uh, developers and buyers, presumably. Absolutely, because it's going, it's going, it's going to be the, probably the second largest pay-per-view in the history of pay-per-view boxing in this country. So it's certainly going to get some widespread publicity, which is good. And that's really just the beginning of it, John. Yeah. And, uh, and Fox Sports is uh, probably the number one uh, sports broadcaster in Australia. Oh, it is, even though I'm not particularly commentating this fight. Um, I actually have a board meeting that night elsewhere, but uh, um, it, uh, it certainly is. Fox Sports pay-per-view is certainly the, the biggest platform there is. Okay. And, and mm -hmm. sponsorship plays a fair bit of uh, a part in the real estate presentation. What, what advantages does BizSpot get out of such a, a sponsorship route? Look, I, I guess at the end of the day, the, the first idea is to be able to pike people's interest. What is BizSpot? Google it and find out. And that's the, the idea is really just to channel the name to get pike interest and make people go to the website, check out the social media and start to understand a little bit more about it. Okay. So BizSpot's an interesting name. Uh, Saviz, did you come up with that? Actually, yes. Uh, me and some friends, we sat down one day and looking for names and B-Spot was basically, we are in a business spot and, and uh, business space and spot. It made sense. We just chose the name B-Spot. Yeah. So, uh, Saviz, so what would you think are the motivations for a property developer or a private vendor to sell real estate through BBX or using a digital trade credit? What do you think of that? Uh, the main reason Look, we, why people would uh, list property. Yes, John. Uh, uh, we've got over uh, 30 years, the history of uh, barter, incorporated, bar, uh, incorporated barter in Australia goes for over 30 years. And uh, during this time, barter has played a major role in selling properties. It's a very unique, very different, and certainly interesting way of selling properties using barter. The way that I normally approach developers and a lot of developers uh, work with me because I show them that we can sell their stock the quickest possible time and we achieve them a great result where they can utilize the trade dollars to buy uh, other development sites or buy other uh, stock for their development or if it's off the plan, they can buy other supplies for their uh, new projects. So this is how we encourage them and we show them and obviously the numbers work. And once pretty much, you know, we sit down to nitty and greedy of the uh, 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 every deal, it, it works out to be much beneficial for a developer to sell their stock using the bar trade uh, credit system or the trade system than selling it traditionally. Yeah, so uh, the work I've done for those people unfamiliar, I also have uh, a long history involved in the digital trade of credit space with... Uh, with real estate and in fact uh, uh, held the uh, the license uh, for my former platform when I was in Australia. So uh, I just hadn't been in directly the last uh, 20 years and catch up with the, the work that you guys are doing. When I was John, doing- John, you, you are the pioneer in the trade. And as I said, we have heard a lot about you and you know we always look at you as uh, the people that you know they started the trade system and certainly it's a pleasure to know about that. So thank you. So uh, when I was dealing with property developers, one of the issues that they have is that they bought a greenfield plot somewhere, they've had the, um, uh, the planning permission, and then they have the, all the upfront costs initially. You know, they've got to get the yes. site prepared, they've got to do the planning, they've got to get the marketing, they've got to get all the, all the groundworks in and, all, and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So do you get involved with the development of that nature right from day one, from the day they get planning? Absolutely, John. As a matter of fact, in most cases, sometimes even the developers come to us and we actually introduce them development sites, then hold their hand, taking them through the sales process and how it's done, the planning process, and uh, uh, basically uh, working with them from the day one. The advantage of that is that I'm sure you're very well experienced 
everything in when it comes to property development works from feasibility. And we sat, we sit down and we go through the feasibility. We show everything, how it works, how we're going to be uh, making our the, the, the quickest time we turn the turnaround time should be the quickest and how we can cut corners to provide the best results. So uh, as you are aware, there is a process and the process is pretty easy. One, two, three, four. And the process is basically you get a site, have your pre-sales. Once you have your pre-sales, then the bank lends you uh, funds to develop it. And uh, a lot of the times the developers struggle, absolutely struggle when it comes to the stage of pre-sales because in Australia, we are a very small market. So pre-sales doesn't happen automatically. Most of the time, developers spend up to 2-3% of the total gross realization of the project in their marketing to get pre-sales where when we uh, offer it in the trade industry, pretty much we get the buyer's lines of credits, they buy the properties, and the developers are very happy because now they've got their pre-sales, whatever is required by the bank, so they can get their funding for the construction. So it speeds up the whole process. There are benefits, so not just from the sales, there are many collateral benefits as well. Yeah, so How good. Yeah, brilliant, Rick. Yeah, absolutely. Rick, you, yeah. you had some comment on that, Rick? No, look, look, it's, it's really kind of exciting, I guess, at the end of the day when you, you realise just what is available to people that are in the trade industry. You, you come across so many people who don't know what to do with their trade dollars and they really don't think, they don't macro think about it all. And the, the actual um, opportunity, the exit strategy for trade dollars utilising property and certainly BizSpot is probably the best on the planet bar none. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come and just, in a moment. That's an interesting one. So just developing that uh, thought. So you're right on the money there, Sabiz, The because uh, developers, when they get their plan, they go to the bank. The, the bank says, yes, if you sell a certain amount, then we'll uh, do the, what they call staged payments in in uh, funding. And you, yeah, you just can't kick funding. that first one off until you've got a certain amount of sales. So that's, that's a key point for any developer out there that's struggling with uh, getting that first kickoff point we can uh, come along and, and get some buyers in there at ground level uh, to get that funding. The other thing that I was uh, used and perhaps you'd like to comment, uh, Siv, is, is, is uh, for the developer to get a, a price. So once the first few sales are set, and if we can use a digital trade credit sale to get in there, it sets the price for the rest of the development. Can you just comment we on that? Call that Absolutely, John. Sorry, I cut you off. But we call that the precedence. So having a good precedent in a development is absolutely crucial. Think of it this way. If a development of, for example, 50 units, out of this 50 units, the precedence, the average precedence does matter. If there are four or five units that are selling at the market price or valuation price or a higher price rather than sold at discounted price, that pushes the price of valuation for the rest of the project. So when I develop, I really sell 10 units to a developer uh, uh, through uh, the uh, trade system, it definitely helps them with the rest of the stock when tomorrow they finished it and they put it in the cash market because pretty much now they've got the precedence, the value has got the precedence and the value will stack up. So it helps them uh, in general. That's why uh, when I say feasibility, it stacks up in feasibility when they look at it and they uh, project it, it's always better to use the uh, trade system than not using it. Yep. So stage one is that uh, we're getting uh, better finance. Stage yep. two is that we're increasing the price and therefore the yield on the entire project. And then stage three, what happens to a, a developer Sabiz, that has already built it? We've caught them after they've already started and they've got a few at the end that they haven't sold. Do, do you get involved with that at all? Absolutely. Most of the time it happens that, you know, the developers, they want to start a new project or they've got excess stock. So in Australia, one of our biggest problems is the land tax. And this is one type of tax that I'm sure we're all aware of. So they, the developers don't want to continue carrying a stock. They want to keep on turning their money. And yes, when they get stuck with the last few of them, they want a quick sell so they can start next. This is, we are the market for them. Why? Because we pretty much generate our buyers. So traditional real estate, they have to wait. They have to get, wait for buyers to come in and buyers to choose. In our situation, we generate it. We come and say, hey, John, you, you, do, you want, do, you, do you think this property is a great property? Because I give you the deposit, 
uh, you, you can borrow the rest from the bank. There you go. You own a property, and obviously, you know uh, the benefits so goes on. Your accountant's happy. Your financial advisor's happy. You know you're happy, and in the long run, now you've used the trade dollars that you've accumulated, or if you don't have it, pretty much uh, now you can uh, uh, borrow it uh, and as interest free. Okay, so from a development point of view, it's the initial funding, it's the price of the property, and it's to clear stock at the end, and that's why a developer would do that. Rick, you know, it's all very well earning trade if you're a developer or a private uh, vendor, but now you, you've been the expert on what a developer spends their money on once they've got it, and then we'll work over into the, uh, into the buyer side in a moment. So where, where typically would a developer spend some of their money? Well, I think that's a, a really good question. And one of the best things about BizSpot, of course, it offers them up other opportunities for further development sites, um, for their, um, their found, their, the foundations with the Earth Moving Works. Um, there are just a number of major key areas where these developer, developers can send, uh, spend their uh, trade dollars in quite an easy way. So the first thing is a developer might uh... Uh, BizSpot find a, a site somewhere and introduce a developer right from day one. So Absolutely. If, if, I, if I can answer it, John, sorry, in, in this, uh, as uh, rightfully Rick said, uh, so from the, from the moment that offering them uh, different sites, which becomes their future work or instantly for them another uh, project that they can cash convert to helping them with their planning, engineering, then when it comes to construction, yeah, if it is off the plan, then helping them with the tradesmen. So we provide them the whole package. And normally, you know, I've got a team that pretty much, uh, as soon as uh, we've got a developer on board, that team jumps in and they look at their cash quotes and this, then they go and say, okay, I can do 10%, 20%, 50%, whatever is possible that they can, they, they can afford, they get it done and they do it on trade. And normally I do that by using existing quotes. And uh, we've, we've actually completed uh, uh, one development in that scenario, which was really well, it went really very good. So that's uh, what uh, we use uh, a, a purchase order. That's what we call it. So that the developer has a bill of quantities that they've uh, yep. that they've uh, got, and it's the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. In their terms, it's the uh, electrician and the concreter and the steel fixer and mm. what have you. They they send out thing. You invite tenders to come in. They tender, uh, and then they put usually a component of BBX to supply the entire project. Is that how it works? Absolutely, that's John. Uh, yeah, sorry, Rick, continue. No, go on. So I was going to say that's absolutely correct in what you're saying, John. The reality is, again, coming back to the micro situation for the butcher and the baker, for example, it's no different for the high end developer. You still have to work through that list of where they're going to be able to spend their trade dollars, and it's quite a good way of doing it. Yeah. So then, and also then the, the, uh, the, the uh, developer is then getting a price based on what they would normally have. Uh, have uh, expected through their bill of quantities. So they're not paying an overinflated price for services. I no, always that's... make sure that when we deal with our clients, we always make sure that they have got a price. We are trying to overcome the issues of inflation, price inflation, and uh, issues of you know, uh, a lack of availability by making sure that we've got cash codes. We already know we're comparing apples to apples, and that is very important in our, in our trade. Yeah, I John, think it's always been a good balance is that you sell the property at a fair price, so it's not an inflated price and not a discounted, but when you spend your money back, it's at a fair price, not an inflated and not a discounted. Rick, you were going to yeah, say something. Yeah, I was going to say this, John, it's, and it's very important to acknowledge this, is the fact that when the properties are valued, they're actually bank valuation. So there is no opportunity to inflate the price because lendings just won't happen if they're not done at bank valuation. So that's very important. And the bank valuation brings honesty back into the system, which is important. Brilliant. Okay. So um, the next question moves then into the buyer. So Rick, you've had a lot of experience with this. So, you know, you're not going to be selling a cup of coffee and then getting a deposit on a real estate. So how can a business uh, owner do, and, and how much, well, a better question is, how much uh, trade does a business owner have to do to sort of play in the real estate space? What would be a number for you? Look, look, I think that the reality is with the, with the BizSpot platform, there are um, 
BTC loans available up to $100,000 in BTC. So whether they've got the trade dollars or not, there's still the opportunity to get in to that property market, taking out a BTC loan, which of course doesn't require a bank check. It's done for you pretty much straight away. But the reality is, of course, again, for those traders who wish to, tra to trade and continually trade to get a deposit, it depends on the type of property they're going to buy because the deposits will vary from 10% to 30%, somewhere in there. So not, it's not an equal playing field as far as saying, well, one deposit fits all because it doesn't. Yeah. So that'll be um, according to each project and according to the ability of the buyer to have enough trade in their account to, to buy that property. Obviously, if you're going to... Uh, of course, they, that, they've got to have the capacity to trade for sure. So, Sabiz, what's the cheapest property in just in total value that you've ever sold using the platform? Uh, well, uh, actually, not long ago, I think about six months ago, we sold a block of land, 2,000 square metres, and that is for, the, for my uh, British folks that, you know, they see land always expensive, $7,000 full trade. Okay. In a place called, uh, what's the name of the... Uh, Calarana Bry, countryside New South Wales. That is probably the cheapest that I've ever sold a real estate piece, and that was on full trade. Yeah. Happy days. And what what's the what's the largest value property that you've sold through the platform? Well, the largest uh, value proposal was a uh, oil refinery that we've uh, brokered the deal, and that was uh, going back about three years ago, and uh, that went for around eighty five million dollars. So that was a major oil refinery. Uh, again, uh, a corporate deal that we brokered. Right. So yep. uh, lovely. So Rick, uh, the average trader, if so long as they can, uh, you know, work out on how to trade, you know, twenty to maybe a hundred thousand might be a sweet spot uh, for for the average person that's got a smallish type of business. So if they could acquire twenty to a hundred thousand. Uh, trade dollars over a period of time through either lending interest free through the credit facility or using some of their current deposits or a combination that that's mm. achievable rick very much achievable i've seen some of the smallest tr traders achieve their biggest dreams ever because the reality is again john for so many people and certainly in this country it's very hard for our children to get into the property market so again, there's another exit strategy by using your trade dollars for your children to get them into the into the property market using those trade dollars. Yeah, and and for the bigger players out there, maybe the manufacturers or the bigger businesses or the or the businesses that have got the ability to sell, you know, a hundred to half a million, maybe up to a million in uh, trade dollars. You've got some bigger properties there that uh, can meet those needs as well. Oh, absolutely, um, Dan. They only have to go to the BizSpot website, click on the properties, and really and truly, they're, they're, most of their wishes would be pretty well satisfied. I've got actually a very good example for you, John, uh, in this scenario. So uh, we uh, recently I come across one of the largest dry cleaners here in Australia called uh, Lawrence Dry Cleaners. Now, they do 80% of all the five-star hotels here in Sydney. They have been in operation for over 90 years. And now they're just getting kicked out of their premises because the premises are right in the heart of Sydney CBD and they're supposed to be doing high rises. So I met with the CEO of the company and he said, Savis, we are stuck. We don't have the deposit and how am I going to find another place? And if I be in rental, I was in rental now for 30 years and now I'm getting kicked out. How can you help me? So then that's when I jumped in. We helped him. We got the guy a warehouse over 6,000 square meters near Sydney somewhere. We got a broker to go and help him with the balance of the funds. We got the owner of the warehouse to accept 20%, a whopping 20% of trade dollars as part of the deal. And you know now we've got a, a dry cleaner that has very successfully invested, borrowed $1.6 million uh, from the trade system. He's going to be trading a lot. So you can imagine that now we can go to any major uh, perhaps hotels or uh, I suppose chain of the restaurants or any hospitality and get all their linen, all their aprons, everything done by these people. So this is what I think the happy and good stories of the trade comes and I certainly think this is one of them. I think that deal, John, actually was worth around $13 million, I believe, was it, Sav? Correct, yes, initially $13 million, but that was for a bigger property, so we found them something smaller around $8 million.
Yep. No, that's a good point. And uh, just for those uh, listeners out there that are viewing this, if, if you're looking for a commercial premises or if you're looking for your dream home, it makes no difference. My suggestion is that there's a lot of property running around in the world. And, yes. and a little, even though it's $2 billion, that's only a little smidgen of the world's property that's on this. So my... Uh, Two. So my, uh, two billion. So my my, uh, my tip for uh, anybody out there is that if you want to go and buy a property, you want to go and buy a, a commercial premises. Find the property that you like. Talk to find the owner. Don't go through the agent. Find the owner, and then connect us up with Bizspot, and then the Bizspot people will come and present to that owner. Like Sabiz is just uh, giving an example of there. See if we can get it onto BBX and so you can get a portion, maybe all of it, maybe a portion depending on the circumstances. So that's the best way. You get exactly the property that you're after. Is that a good tip, uh, you guys? You agree with that? Oh, absolutely, John. You've got it, you've got it in one. Perfect. So absolutely, well, John. And I, I actually top it off. I actually make it one step better. I would say for all of your listeners that uh, if somebody is looking to invest into a property, come and talk to us. What we'll do is that we will find a property that where, you know, you would be saving that deposit, the initial deposit or par part of that payment by, by uh, paid using the uh, BBA digital dollars. So we, we don't, not only you have, you doesn't have to find the owner, we will find the owner because we've got buyer's agents. We can find them places, the same or similar properties in that particular area. So coming a, 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 as a great example will be, let's say if somebody in England looking to for, invest in Australia for a property, they talk to us, we will find everything. We make sure that he is okay. We make sure that we comply with all the laws and they, they, this is something they can purchase. So we will do all the legwork for them. So this is going out globally, guys. You know, I was uh, crazy enough to put this 24-hour global show on a couple of weeks ago and it's uh, coming together beautifully. You guys are yeah. primarily uh, focused in Asia Pacific. And I know you, you uh, Sevise, you're going to be, be moving more into Asia uh, quickly. What about for people uh, in uh, the UK and in the Americas that will also be watching this? Is there any plan for BizSpot to, uh, to expand into either of those territories soon? I think More that's so. one of the, sorry, Sal, I was about to say, it's probably one of the biggest yeah. items on the agenda is the, the future expansion of BizSpot. Is, is, there will be no stopping it from this point, John, and obviously with the strong BBX connection in the UK, it's, it's really a foregone conclusion that BizSpot will arrive there at some point. Well, we'll, we'll be instrumental in that. I've uh, got no doubt working with you guys. And for all my friends in America, uh, if you're through Erta, Ron Whitney and all the, all the guys, hello out there. We'd love to uh, uh, get BizSpot over into the Americas too. So if we've got any developers, any exchange owners, any businesses that, uh, that want to get involved, then there'll be details uh, that you can get in contact after the show. Guys, uh, it's been absolutely fantastic uh, catching up with you both and uh, giving people some inspiration, I hope, as to what they can turn some spare capacity in. It's one of the nine pillars that I talk about and wealth creation is, uh, is a very impo important part of, of turning spare capacity into one of the pillars and wealth creation is, is the example we've been using today. I look forward to uh, catching up with you guys uh, uh, in the... Not, to distant future. It's been my pleasure to have you guys on the show today and, and I hope uh, for everybody out there, they've got some great value. Thank you very much. Well, well done, John. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, John. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.